Good evening, Greater Godly family. It's a blessing to be here once again. I'm Minister Molden. I'm sitting here with my big brother in the ministry, Minister Hall. And uh, we're here to discuss tonight about confession and correction. As we all know, as Godly believers, it's good to talk about repentance and understand what re true repentance is. So we're going to uh, dive right into this lesson so we can all get what we need to get from it. And um, i start off with reading... Uh, why this lesson matters, and then we just chime in and go in from there. So from the uh, book, it says, why this lesson matters, it says, sometimes people lose their sense of direction and turn away from the values they once held as, as sacred. How can we recapture the values we once cherished? After his prayer of confession, Ezra called the former exile to repentance and lead them in worship by, leading, by reading the book of the law. And then we're going, now we're going to hop into the verses uh, from here, and I'm going to start at uh, the book of Ezra, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. And here we go. It's, it starts like this. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehel, one of the sons of Elam answered and said unto Israel, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning these, this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Arise for this matter, belongeth unto thee, we also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. And like my brother said in the ministry said, this is a very good lesson we got today. It's talking about confessions and corrections. It, the lesson is teaching us one important fact. The important fact that the lesson is trying to get us to see is one thing to confess. Yeah, yeah one thing. But a confession is no good unless there's a correction. Yes, sir. Anytime that there's a truthful confession, there has to be some change, some correction behind it. Yes, sir. You see, God don't want us uh, uh, just, a fake, just a fake apology. Right, right. When we, do, when we sin, God wants us to confess our sin and change. Absolutely. God don't accept and forgive us of our sins when we just give them our sin to ask for, correct, for forgiveness and then turn around and just keep doing the same sin over and over again. What God is trying to get us to do, he loves us so much, he knows we're going to mess up. So he said, okay, anytime that you mess up, he said, I've made the way for you. He said, all you got to do is confess and truly Truly in your heart, turn away from, you know, be grateful for that, that sin that you committed mm -hmm. and, and confess that sin and just turn away from it and not try your best not to do it again. But God knows we all are human. That's right, that's right. And being human, mm -hmm. that their own human side of us try to, but any time that we do a sin, a sin is, is just simply disobeying God. Anytime we disobedient to God, what we have to do is come back and ask God for his forgiveness and truly try our best with the help of the Holy Spirit what God put inside of us to not do it again. Because if we confess, that's just like, you know, people used to come to church on Sunday and confess, well, you know, I messed up this week. I was out there drinking. I was out there running women. Mm -hmm. I confess I'm not going to do that no more. Right. Then they turn around and leave church on the end and go right back out there Monday doing the same right. thing. Sincere. Mm -hmm. God don't accept that confession because there was no real change. Anytime that you make a truthful confession, there's got to be some change. Yeah. You've got to be show grief. You've got to be some sorrow for what you did wrong. We, we should love God enough mm -hmm. to honor what he did, 
the, the price he paid for our sin. To, that every time we sin, then it should hurt us. Right, right, absolutely. Any time that we sin, we should think about what God paid done paid for, mm-hmm. paid for that sin. Yes, and uh, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna finish out the reading so we can chime in and talk about this whole subject of making your confessions and corrections. So I'm gonna finish out the reading. This is the finish of the reading uh, from Ezra. Uh, chapter 10, verses 5 through 8, and then we're going to go 9 through 12. So in, uh, this verse starting at verse 5, it said, Then arose Ezra and made the chief priest the, the Levites in all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word, and they swear. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Jonathan, his son of Elijah, Elijah and when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves in, together unto Jerusalem. And that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Verse 9. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the twentieth day of the month. And all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter. And for the great rain, rain. and Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, that thou hast said, so must we do. And, and this passage uh, is talking about um, Ezra. He was the, uh, the, the priest uh, of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, um, they did a, a terrible thing. They, um, they took wives of, 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 what you say, foreign uh, people, um, the people that God uh, instructed them not to do, he said. He said, "Don't, don't, don't, don't take wives of, of the uh, of the people that are not of us. You know, the people that was around at the time, and and they decided to, to do these things. And so, therefore, Ezra, being the type of man that he was at that time, he made a commitment to to uh, not drink and not eat and just mourn and cry out to God for the way that we have done wrong towards Him. And he knew that something had to be done to 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 you know, handle what we have done. Something we got to do. Something we got to pay some type of respect to God because we didn't mess up here. We didn't mess up. He told us, "Don't take up the wives." They went and took up the wives of the of the of the of the other. What well, we can say, another race. You know, at that time, and um, and so they when they when they did that, and they started making wives of these these uh these other race and stuff like that. And Israel said, "God told us not to do that." And the reason why He told them not to do that is because, as we know, with different uh races and it comes with different cultures and beliefs. So they had different beliefs that went against God. So God was trying to instruct them, like, don't do that. But we, they did that. So Ezra said, we got to do something that's, that's a true, true repentance that, that's going to show him that, uh, that we don't want to do it anymore. And so Israel told them what to do. He said, he said you got to let go of those wives that you have. You got to let them go and everything to do with them. And, and we, we got to make a confession to the Lord right now. And we got to accept the correction of this. So he decided to do that, and one thing that we see here is that Ezra uh, made up in his mind that uh, we uh, you have to get this right in the way that he felt. Like like Minister Hall said, we have to feel that we have to feel that that hurt and that that shame, you know, and uh, the feeling of a uh, uh, feeling like I, I just I'm so regretful of my decision. I'm so regretful of my decision and. And that's what uh, Ezra felt about the children of Israel. And he was like, he's like, we didn't messed up and we already got and brought us out. And, and I don't want to enter back in the captivity. I just don't, I just, I just feel like, I feel like, I feel like we're doing wrong. I feel like we got to get right. So he, he encouraged us to, um, to uh, really step into repentance. A lot of people, they, um, they think forgiveness. They don't think repentance because repentance is the turning away. So they try to, you know, they try to steer away from that. You know, they don't want to, 
They don't want to do that. And then also, if you look at repentance in the, in the uh, dictionary, you'll see it says the regretful feeling or remorse. So it's important for us to understand the difference in just confessing, like Minister Hall said, and, and truly repenting. Because this is what the Word of God says in Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verses 26. This is what it says. I want to read this for you. It says, For if we sin willingly after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sins. So what is that saying is that if you if you are uh, continuing your sin, after you so-called and talk to God and, and, and repented of this thing, uh, uh, if you therefore what has happened on the cross ain't for you. Because what happened on the cross, when he died for our sins, that was for them people that wanted to turn away, turned away from the, uh, uh, what they was uh, doing. Not for those that want to continue and keep getting second chance and third chance and fourth chance. That wasn't for them. And that's what Ezra realized with the children of Israel, that we have to get this right. And in our time, in our time that we're living in, we have Jesus Christ. You understand? So Jesus Christ stepping in uh, for our sins. So we have to make a repentance and we have to know to... Uh, to make that decision and be sincere. And God is the only one that can judge sincerity. So don't ever think when you repent uh, that that uh, it's a cover-up for people because people don't count. People do not count when you repent. It's all about God, and he's the one that's going to judge you. He's, he's, the, he's that lie detector test inside you. He's reading everything. So when you're saying yes and he knows it's a no, we got a problem there. You got something that you need to work on. And that's, and that's very important, but also... I wanted us to uh, realize as children, the children, uh, it's an encouragement to you. Um, I know your parents try to instruct you not to be around certain people. And God was instructing the children, like he said, don't get connected to them other people. Stick with your own kind because we have our own beliefs and our cultures. And I know a lot of times as children, you kind of think like, I don't want my... I don't think they know what they're talking about and stuff like that. But everybody that you attach yourself to brings something to you and leave you with something when they leave you. So that's one thing that you have to understand, children, that, that when your parents get to speaking towards you and saying, hey, you can't go over there, I don't want you hanging around so-and-so, or no, you can't go to their house, or no, you're not going to have parties, because they know what they have established and what God has given them to raise you, to get you where you're supposed to be in life. So that's important for us as children to realize that, that, when those that are above us are speaking to us, they're looking over the, the bigger picture. And that's what God was telling them. This is a bigger picture. I'm not, I'm not just, I don't want y'all to deal with them people just because of that. It's because they got a different belief. They don't believe in me like they should. He said, but you are my chosen people, and I want you to believe accordingly. Okay. And let me add to that. Yeah. Let me give you a little, back, a little background on the, the subject here. Israel, what the people of Israel, uh, it, God commanded them not to mix yeah. with the pagans. Yeah. And he told them, don't mix with them because it would hurt their religion. Because, see, the pagans, they believed in idol gods. Mm. God told them, he said, don't mix with anybody that makes man-made objects gods. Right. He said, because that will hurt your worship with me. Mm -hmm. He said, sure. because you... If you mix right. you and the children mm -hmm. that come out of that marriage will begin mm -hmm. to not understand who the real true God is yeah, and who to that. really worship. Yeah. You'll be caught between which way should I go? Yeah. And so God told them to keep from doing this. Just don't marry mm -hmm. pagans mm -hmm. because they got other gods. Mm -hmm. And what happened when Israel, went, when they went into the city of Canaan, mm -hmm. the older mm -hmm. people of the tribe started getting rid of the wives they had yeah. and started marrying young wives of the yeah. Canaanites yes, sir. because they was nice looking and everything. Mm -hmm. And you know how us men are. <laughs> and so they started getting rid of their older wives. Mm -hmm. started going, and what happened mm -hmm. shortly after they got them, mm -hmm. It wasn't long before they had a problem with their religion. Yeah. Because they wife, they didn't want to follow God and God's rules. Mm -hmm. right. And then the children were they were brought up with a conflict. Yeah. And God said so he had already forced out it, so he told them, Don't you know, you would think it's strange for God to tell people 
don't mix with certain people. Mm -hmm. But God had already foresaw what was going to happen. Right. And he told them, he said, don't mix because if you do, mm -hmm. it's going to be a religious problem. Right. And that's why God, because, you know, this verse in the Bible is one of the verses that a lot of people used in the olden days to keep black and whites from marrying. Mm -hmm. Because it says that you shouldn't mix mm -hmm. with other races. Mm -hmm. But that ain't what he said. God was saying, don't mix with people that don't have the same and share the same religion. Right. They have the mm -hmm. same God. Yes, sir. Because if you do, then you have problems. You begin yeah. to waver from side to side. You become right. unstable. And God don't want an unstable person. Right. I think I just chiming on there, like when you said that, it, it hit me. I was like, wow, because like when you said that, you said that they have like the mother has a, one religion, and then the father believes in God, right? So then it goes to that scripture about because then the child will come out double minded, right? So then the scripture says a double minded man, like you said, unstable in all his ways. So now they're gonna breed up a, 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 a generation of children that that that's double minded, and God said, I can't have things out of order. So that's that that's the that's the beauty in there that God was looking at it in a in a big, big way, like listen, I gotta make sure that my children, my children, the children of Israel, I gotta make sure y'all not producing double minded people, because that's not what that's not that ain't how I stand. That's not of me. So I think that's 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 a great thing that God seen to make sure he was looking for for on into the generation. So this whole correction that took place with the children of Israel was really for the generation to come after them. Like, we got to get it right now for those that are coming after us. And I think that's greatly important for us to realize that, hey, you need to go and confess and get things that you have going for you right now because somebody watching you. And, and, and one thing this lesson is trying to show us, mm -hmm. this lesson is trying to show us at all times we should be obedient to what God has told us to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, society, we have a tendency, society change with the wind. Yeah. Society goes with whatever is popular mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. And too often, the members of the ch God's church yeah. is becoming like society. They want to blend in with society. Right. You know, there was a time in the church mm -hmm. that they, they talked about mm -hmm. sin, mm -hmm. and they told you, you know, they, people came before the church, and they confessed their sins and stuff, but they had to stop that. Back in them days, they did that. They had to stop that because the church began to start judging. Mm -hmm. And instead of being forgiven mm -hmm. and helping them mm -hmm. away, to turn away from that sin. Yeah. But God was trying to show the people of Israel mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't be double-minded. You got to, mm -hmm. and, and anytime you mix mm -hmm. religions, right. you become double-minded. And God in our lesson is trying to tell us he wants us to come, he wants us when we make a mistake mm -hmm. to come back and confess that mistake. That's why I said mm -hmm. confession and correction. Mm -hmm. He wants you to confess that mistake, but he wants you to correct that mistake. Yeah. If there's no correction mm -hmm. after the confession, mm -hmm. then you've done no good. Yeah. So yeah, so like right there is stating that um we when we confess something, something else got to replace it. After you confess it, you can't just say, "Oh, I, I know I done wrong, and I confess that I, I done wrong." But if you're not willing to put in the work to to uh, correct yourself and replace it, so that's like when they did made that uh, decision to you know let go of the wives and all that is uh, it was it was good for after. So after we repent from God, we have to replace it with something, something under to under God. So like you had whatever type of issue that you have. It's good to uh, find something to replace where you have fell, fell at. You know, use that as a stepping stone, you know, instead of a teardown. You know, so like if I if I was to slip up and, and do something uh, contrary to God, now now after I confess to God, now I need to do what's right to God. I need to devote myself to God for whatever time frame or whatever, you know, whatever it is in that area, I need to be willing to sacrifice the time to devote myself to God, to get him right and let him know that I truly I truly feel regretful about the decision that I made, and I think that's what took place in that time with the children issue. They truly felt regretful. Really, Prince, uh, uh, the prince, uh, not prince, but priest, Ezra, he really felt regretful. He, 
he really stepped in and, and, and for the uh, children of Israel, and I think that's a great thing. Amen. Well, see, Ezra at that time, he saw mm -hmm. the harm that it was doing. Yeah. And he didn't want the wrath of God to be brought up on the people again. Yeah. And so Israel called the people together. Yeah. And he, he, he warned them that they were disobeying God by doing what they was doing. Mm -hmm. And he told them, he said, now, if you don't want mm -hmm. the wrath of God to be brought up on you mm -hmm. for the things that you're doing wrong, yeah. you've got to confess your sin mm -hmm. and you've got to repent. Yeah. Now, that was a cruel, to some people, it made a seem cruel punishment. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of your wife and kids. Right. But mm -hmm. that was a, a, a a thing mm -hmm. that had to be done because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would never have to go through that if they would just been obedient. If they'd have been yeah. obedient to God in the first place, they would have never had to go through that. Yes, but because they disobeyed God by going and do mm -hmm. marrying into different cultures, yes, into idol religion, mm -hmm. then they had to make a change. And to show that they had a real change, they, mm -hmm. they had to turn and make a change. They had to do something drastic. Yeah. And then the show, Israel was so grieved mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. he was so serious about what he was doing that he called all the country together. Mm -hmm. And he warned the whole, all of the tribes about what they was doing. And he told them if they didn't change, that they were going to lose all their land, all their property, yeah. everything. Right. So it was a serious mm -hmm. It was a serious consequence to what they were doing wrong. Yeah. And I think the question arises, uh, when you do wrong towards God, how serious is it, is it to you? That's, the, that's the, the biggest question. Does it really mean something to you to do wrong to God? And if it, if it doesn't, then you have something that you have to, uh, you have some work to do. You have to get the understanding. Like, like when uh, the Ezra talked to the children of Israel, he brought it to their attention. Like, I'm, uh, he, told, he told them what it was. So it's good that you get the understanding of uh, where you are uh, flawed. Because some people, some of us, we, we don't know. Some of us don't know completely uh, where uh, they have done wrong yet. But it's good to listen to those who have shown themselves to be more wise and get more knowledgeable, knowledge, knowledgeable about what they're uh, saying. So that's one thing that, uh, that I encourage for us to do as believers to uh, be okay with taking correction, constructive criticism. On your on your life, on what you're doing towards God, just don't be so don't be so strong that you can't recognize when you're weak, you know, and don't be so weak you can't recognize it's time to get stronger, you know, and that's that's the biggest thing I encourage for us as believers to to be like these children of Israel in this time. They said when he told them what to do, they said and we'll do it, we'll do it, cause we know we know that we have wronged God in this way, and we don't want the wrath of God on us, and that is a great thing in this lesson uh, context about confession. And correction, uh, teaching us that uh, when we do wrong for God, it's the best thing to do is to get it right. Right then. Don't procrastinate. Right then. It's the time to get it right. Don't think like you didn't done. Don't get so caught up. See, this is one thing I like. Don't get so caught up in the shame and the feeling down that you forget to say, Lord, I really want, can you give me what I need to turn away, to get away from what the wrong I have done? You know, because sometimes we get so bent out of shape. You know, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go around nobody because I didn't done wrong. I didn't slipped. I didn't been there before. I didn't been there before. I, you know, just to give you a little, um, be transparent. When I had a, had my uh, first child out of wedlock, I said I ain't going to church. And I ain't messed up. I didn't messed up. I didn't done wrong. I didn't done wrong. Then uh, I had the uh, ministers and pastor came to me. He talked to me. He said he said uh, the thing is it's not about so much in the messing up. It's about staying messed up. You don't stay messed up. If we have the ability to confess our sins to God and get it right through Jesus Christ, then why not do it? Why not do it and truly turn away? So I love this, this lesson in general because it lets us know that we have no excuse in staying in the wrong place with God. We ain't got no excuse. And this lesson also lets us know that God gives us leaders, right. ministers, teachers, and elders that wisdom from God to correct us. Absolutely. Israel was able to correct the people of Israel mm -hmm. because they knew mm -hmm. that he was a mm -hmm. spiritual leader right. and he was 
what he was saying was coming from God. Yes, sir. So when a person from God tells you something mm -hmm. in correction, he should do it in a loving, spiritual way. Yes, sir. And you should uh, mm -hmm. you should uh, understand how he's doing it out of love and not to hurt you, mm -hmm. and that you should be willing to make that change. Yes, sir. Because if you're not willing to make that change, once God shows you through someone else, because see, God ain't gonna come down here mm -hmm. and tell you. Yeah. Miss Bowling, you messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because number one, he done showed you in your mind that you messed up. Right. You know you messed up. Right. And he ain't going to come down here and say nothing about it. But mm -hmm. he going to have someone else, a spiritual leader, tell you mm -hmm. how to get back yeah. in, 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 in his grace. Yes, yeah, sir. Because, see, once you mess up, it, you can go back to God and get back in his grace. Mm -hmm. But all you got to do is just... Do it the spirit the right way. That's the right way. And truly be repentant. Yes, sir. And to change mm -hmm. from the way things you're doing. Yes, sir. All right. So that's going to wrap up our lesson tonight uh, uh, on confession and correction. And uh, next week's lesson uh, will be, let me show you this right. Next week's lesson will be initiate, initiating renewal. Initiating renewal. The devotional reading is Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 through 6 and 15 through 19. The background scriptures are Nehemiah uh, chapter 2, verses 11 through 20, and also chapter 13, verses 1 through 22. And the printed text is Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 11 through 20. And, uh, and uh, I hope that this lesson encourages you to uh, go ahead and get it right. Simple as that. Just get it right. Go on, repent, and turn from your way. And, We'll close out in a, in, a, in a prayer from Minister Hall. Let us pray. It says, Lord, thank you for the conviction and ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life to prompt us to repent and to seek the forgiveness which we, when we sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.